Hello and welcome to the Manager Q Sprint 181 review. This was a regular two week sprint and it ended uh, Monday. Uh, so, uh, as usual, I'll provide the overview. Kavya will update us on the UI, Adam on the providers, and Jason on the rest. Uh, in, in this uh, sprint, uh, as you can see here, we have uh, uh, 182 pull requests merged, 248 uh, created. Um, as we were continuing to the transition from Travis to GitHub Actions. And uh, in terms of the breakout, there was a lot of bug fixing. Um, and the reason for that was that we are, uh, we announced the Morphe uh, general availability release. Um, and so uh, you can go to the talk forum for that. And uh, we'll also provide a link um, for that. And with that, I will turn it over to Kavya. Yep, thanks, Ole. Um, this print total 31 PRs got merged across UI repos, 16 bugs, eight enhancements, and so on. I only added important ones. Next one. Um, in chargeback reports page, whenever we type something in search and when there are no results for that, we have no way to cancel that search text and go back to table view. So uh, Jeffrey fixed that bug here. Next one. Gilbert fixed a bug in dashboard chart table view. Title was undefined before he fixed that with chart uh, title. Next one. Similar to previous one, Gilbert also fixed performance charts table view titles. Next one. Um, I did fix provider dashboard charts title and sort order as well. Earlier dates are in the end ordering table. So fix that issue here. Next one. I fixed container dashboard chart layout. Uh, it's a minor CSS bug, so fix that bug here. Next one. In provision screen, whenever we select template and when we do check and check of a uh, high deprecated checkbox, uh, table columns are changing. Jeffrey fixed that bug here. Next one. In modified environment, we can't customize login page or logo, so I did hide uh, Custom customized tab for a modified environment in this PR. Next one. Uh, when resolution changed from default view, advanced search model is hiding on the left now. So I fixed that bug here. Next one. Uh, this is a minor CSS bug in dashboard charts. Uh, divider line is overlapping with the chart labels, sorry, uh, um, chart data. So fix that bug here. Um, this is an enhancement melody converted add and remove host aggregate forms to react and carbon. Next one. Um, similar to previous one, uh, this is add and remove security group form. Gilbert converted that to carbon and react. Next. Um, so this is an enhancement from auto ST team. So they disabled um, delete cloud volume for the auto ST providers. I think that's all from UI. More to Adam. Thanks, Kavya. Uh, for Amazon this sprint, we fixed the, uh, or Gilbert fixed the cloud volume create and edit DDF forms, uh, similar bugs to the OpenStack provider from the previous sprint, but uh, he got around to the Amazon one this time. So that should be all fixed up now. For Azure, we're preventing logical regions from being uh, possible to be selected for the provider region attribute. When we switched to using the Azure uh, CLI to auto-generate what regions are possible, uh, Azure returns a whole bunch of logical regions like United States or global or Europe, which allow you to query across multiple physical regions, but they're not valid selections for uh, the region to be used for Manage IQ. So we um, prevent those from being added uh, via the rate test to the, uh, to the seeded regions. Uh, we're also skipping any instances as part of refresh if we cannot find the flavor. Um, this was actually a result of the, of the uh, incorrect region being, being picked, but just in case anything happens again in the future, we'll just skip an instance if we can't find the flavor. This is causing a nil error when we were trying to look up the hardware info for an instance as part of refresh. 
for IBM uh, Cloud Infrastructure Center, we fixed a targeted refresh bug that was caused by the Cinder Manager Association. Essentially, it had the class name hard coded uh, as part of the, the inherited class to be OpenStack Cinder Manager, and that was causing CIC to not be able to find it. Uh, and thus the cloud volume lookup was, was um, throwing an ill error. So we got that fixed up as well. Next slide. Uh, for IBM Cloud, Power VS uh, added support for catalog provisioning. So now you can use the uh, service catalogs to provision your Power VS instances. Uh, they also updated the naming convention to match what the Power VS service allows. It was a little bit too restrictive. Um, Power VS also allows dashes, and we were only accepting um, digits, so you know, uh, characters and, and numbers. Um, they also fixed the uh, disabling of SSH password authentication. The, it was possible if you picked an SSH password type off that the um, password would make it through to the Ansible runner command line, um, which is obviously uh, not good for security. So we switched to only allowing to use um, key-based SSH authentication. They also added snapshots to the uh, Terraform uh, automated spec environment so that um, snapshots will now be part of the um, ECR re-records uh, re the next time that we have to do that. Uh, for HMC, they added a description to LPARs, which are uh, mapped and managed IQ as virtual machines. They also now collect uh, memory and processor information for these VMs. For uh, IBM PowerVC, they added a check to uh, look for the minimum supported version of PowerVC as part of verify credentials so that uh, you can't add a PowerVC environment if it's uh, too old. Next slide. Uh, for OpenStack this sprint, we fixed uh, cloud volumes not being created in the selected tenant. So this is another issue with the um, DDF forms parameter being passed down, not matching what the OpenStack uh, operation was expecting. We we're looking for, I think, cloud tenant, but it's actually cloud tenant ID. Uh, so we were, uh, switched that to look up the proper, um, the proper tenant when creating the cloud volume. We also moved the host aggregate uh, queue methods to core so that you don't have to um, look up the class name before calling queue. Um, that was in support of the uh, API and UI switching over to using um, DDF for host aggregates creation. Uh, for over, Nasser converted the ISO data store code to use supports feature where previously it was using uh, hard-coded managed IQ providers over class names in the UI, so we now use a supports feature to check if you can create an ISO data store on an overt provider, as opposed to uh, the UI having to use the overt class names directly. Next slide. We also have a new provider that was out of this sprint. Uh, Xlabs has coded up the uh, Cisco Intersight provider, which is a new physical infrastructure provider. Uh, so it currently supports collection of inventory, uh, events, targeted refresh, metrics, physical server operations like start, stop, and uh, LED blink, and Pixie server provisioning. So it's actually, from the start, a pretty full-featured provider. The repo has been transferred over to the ManageIQ org. The uh, PR to add it to the core gem file is still pending. So once that's merged, you can uh, start testing this out. But if you want to start looking at the code, uh, it's there in ManageIQ providers, uh, Cisco Intersight. And that's it for providers over to Jason. Okay. <clears throat> on the platform side, um, Adam added a fix or a feature uh, to update the model supporting the feature to check instances. Uh, this is more of a code refactoring, actually, but it what it does is allows us to not, it's, it's, it's a performance thing. Instead of pulling back everything and then checking it afterward, we check it ahead of time. Um, right now, it does it in an inefficient way, and we're going to look into making it more efficient in the future. Uh, an old PR from Nick Lamoro was merged this sprint um, for binary blob purging. Um, it's actually based on a bug where the binary blobs don't have, uh, are not necessarily connected to resources during provisioning, uh, and they can be purged out from underneath the provisioning, uh, the execution of the provisioning. So this uses the created ad column instead um, to make sure that we only purge something after a certain amount of time. Uh, Keenan added a fix to limit the length of the user, user ID, and email. 
Um, right now they were open-ended and although the UID, the, excuse me, the UI could block it uh, from being too long, um, you know, requests could technically send in an enormous amounts of data. Um, so it's sort of a, a, a slight security uh, fix. And finally, uh, Joe added an update to Rails to get us to 6046 for a Rails issue. Um, our builds were already using 6046, but this ensures that the minimum version is 6046. Um, Nasser added a change to supports feature for ISO data store. Um, so this adds ISO data stores into the support feature, supports feature mix in. Next slide, please. On the build side, um, I made changes to bump all of our uh, container images to UBI 8.5 uh, where they weren't before. Some of them were still on 8.4. Um, some other ones were, so it was a bit of a mix. Um, this fixes a bunch of security issues, um, you know, old packages that were uh, not being updated because it was an older version. Uh, Brandon made a change to bump the OVA default memory up to 16 gig. So for vSphere deployments, uh, the default used to be, I believe, 6 gig, which just isn't enough to run. Um, and our recommended amount in our documentation is 12 gig anyway. Um, we made it 16 gig, and the user can always change it when they, um, when they deploy the image. Uh, Adam made a number of changes. I only listed one here, but there's about six or seven PRs, uh, which clean up setting log file owner and permissions. Um, we found that we couldn't boot the appliance uh, because the appliance, there were certain cases where log files weren't being set up with the proper uh, permissions, uh, and then it would just fail on boot. Uh, and finally, uh, Brandon made a change to upgrade our Go operator to Go 1.17 from Go 1.14, I believe. Uh, this is mainly to get bug fixes and security fixes and things like that. Um, we, the, the, the operator SDK version has not been updated, but that's something we're going to be looking at next. Next slide, please. On the API side, uh, Melody added a change for add remove of host aggregate of hosts to host aggregates. Um, this is the API side of the UI change you saw earlier in copious slides. Next slide, please. Uh, on the developer side, we've done a lot more to switch to GitHub Actions. A uh, number of repos were converted, including all of the core repositories. Um, Adam also changed the Manage IQ cross repo tool um, that actually runs tests across multiple repos, and it had to be made more aware of get the GitHub Actions changes that we were making in all those repos. And he also changed the bot because the bot would, you can request the bot to run across repo tests for you, and it would previously write out essentially a Travis YAML, but since we're not using Travis anymore, that needed to be changed as well. Uh, and uh, Oleg changed our website builds for manageiq.org to, to, to move to GitHub Actions as well, uh, and they're all working now as well. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, next print review will hopefully be in two weeks as usual. Um, the link on the bottom, I believe, is incorrect, so we'll, we'll get it updated. And uh, with that, I want to thank uh, the community, the contributors, and uh, the speakers for uh, making this sprint a success. Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs>